Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss on the SIP protocol, that is session initiation protocol. I will discuss about the SIP methods, SIP messages, uh, SIP headers, SDP messages and all. And I'll discuss about the few scenarios as well, like when, when there is a call going from uh, one agent to the another agent and then to the third agent, I'll discuss those scenarios as well. So let's start the SIP protocols with the basics. So SIP, as you know, uh, SIP is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol and we mainly call peer as a user agent. So we have user agent client on user agent client on the one side and the user agent server on the other side. It's like if uh, if user age, if someone is initiating the request, that is a user agent client. And if the other party is responding, responding back, then that is a user agent server. So most of the time user agent, so who, who initiates the request, that is a user agent client. As you can see, UAC initiates client request and UAS receives and processes the request and then it can return a response with a with a message and sip endpoint like can function as a uac plus us like it's a combination of both and this is a client server model between the phones and the sip servers and then the next part is like uh, sip is a protocol which is used for creating modifying and terminating the sessions with one participant or more participants. So uh, in the SIP, the sessions can include multimedia conferencing, internet telephony calls, and multimedia distributions as well. So SIP has the capability to uh, negotiate the media and it can create the sessions as well. In SIP, we will define the role of, uh, what's, the, what's the role of SIP proxy server as well. We'll discuss that as well. It defines authent authentication mechanism as well. And then uh, uh, we will discuss about the headers as well, which support more services and more features as well. And then we already discussed about UAC and UAS, it's industry-wide standard. So let's discuss about the SIP sessions and transport. So SIP uh, and the SIP members can communicate with others via unicast message, multicast, or via a mesh of unicast relations or a combination of all these like unicast or multicast or a combination or a mesh. So signaling and deployment. So mainly SIP supports five methods for the establishment and the terminating multimedia communications. We have user location, user availability, user capabilities, session setup and the session management. Let's discuss about it one by one. So user location, so SIP, it determines the location of targeted endpoints, like where is our target, what's the endpoint locate, where is the endpoint located? And then user availability, it, it determines the availability of targeted endpoints as well, whether that uh, the endpoint is available or not. And then we have user capabilities, so it determines the media capabilities of the other endpoint as well. Media capabilities means you can say the codex, whether that codec is in, uh, I can say whether that codec, they support that codec or not, like the targeted endpoint supports that codec or not. So that should be under media capabilities. Then we have session setup. It establishes a session between originating and targeted. Yeah, it is creating a session. And then we have session management. So it can transfer the call as well and it can terminate the call as well. Like if A party is calling to B, then it can transfer the call to C as well, to D as well. So it manages that transfer and termination of calls. As well. So what are the SIP capabilities? So in the location, the first part determines location. It supports address resolution, name mapping, and the call redirection as well. In the media capabilities, yeah, it is showing via SDP. So SDP contains so many things, starting with the whether that audio call is there or a video call or the RTP port or the codec capabilities. So these all are the part of SDP. 
then we have a determine availability so uh, if the end if the end uh, like the another endpoint is not available so how do we know that that endpoint is not available so sip returns a message like message there will be a number of that message that uh, we will get to know why the target is not available it responds with the, some message we will discuss about all the responses as well later on then uh, we have establishes session it also supports mid call changes like if we want to add another endpoint and if we want to change my codec in the middle of that call i can do that as well it's just that i need to uh, send in another uh, message to establish that if i want to add anything if i would want to change the codec and it also supports the transfer and hold feature as well so uh, let's uh, so what are the sip clients so ip phone is a sip client soft phones cisco sip phones they can also initiate sip requests and responses respond as well sip gateways as well they can they, they provide call control capabilities sip conferencing stations and then let's discuss about the sip servers now so we have three servers that is one is proxy server redirect server and the registrar server in prox proxy server what proxy server will do proxy server receive request and forward it on the client's behalf i will show you that on the sip architecture and it authenticate it authenticates authorized and it will do the routing as well. in the redirect server so redirect server provides the information of the client for the of the next hope actually it provides uh the information of next hop to the client and client then contact the next hop server or that us directly as well then we have registrar server so registrar server it receives the request from the client for registration of their current location like what's the current location of that client it will register it will receive request and it, it the, this registrar server is mostly co-located with the redirect or a proxy server so this is a sip architecture there you can see uh, let me just do one thing okay so you can see here here as this sip user agent this user agent is sitting here like he is uh, that person is calling from the uh, cisco ip phone or maybe from any of the soft phone so the signaling is going like from this to this proxy there we have to like proxy server and redirect server so signaling is going in this way so first this and this and to the gateway and if we talk about the rtp then rtp will establish between these two only this is just a signaling between like it will go to this way so first to the proxy servers if we have redirect servers as well and then it goes to the gate and the rtp will establish between these two and like if like if the another party uh, is internal or if it is external that depends on that okay then we have a sip request response model so it means it will show you uh, like as you can see on the left side this is a user agent client and on the right side that is a server those are same like those both are the cisco ipv phones but the person who is making a request that is a client and who is receiving the request is a server let me show you so it sent you the request from the client to the server then the server will respond with something so uh, it can send a message as well that a progressing message but that is optional can again progressing message then op optional but it can accept so once the server accepts then it will send either the acceptance message if it accepts that request or it can send a redirect message if he wants to redirect it to another user agent server and it can give you the rejection message as well if the server is busy or it cannot take the call then it can respond with a rejection message uh we will discuss about all the messages starting with 1xx till 6xx so it will respond with accept either acceptance or redirection or a rejection message so yeah you can see only one of these is sent either acceptance redirection or rejection so let's discuss about the normal basics call flow so you can see the 
uh, on this side we have user agent one and then we have user agent two so if user agent one is initiating the request then it would be a client and if the user agent two is initiating the request then the user agent two is a client so in this case user agent one is a client so we are just assuming uh, they knows each other ip addresses so let's check the first message so whenever the user agent is initiating a call so what's the first message it will send to the user agent to that is server so it just invites so whenever it is making a call it sent a invite message to the user agent server and if the user agent server uh, like so user agent server needs to send a response with a hundred prime as soon as he got the invite message from the client because if it doesn't send the hundred trying then user agent one will resend the invite again it's like within two seconds it, it increases with the time actually so once it sends the hundred trying message to the user agent one then it will not send the next message that is next invite actually so now it will wait for all other messages which server needs to send to the client so the next message would be uh, after 100 trying the next message would be 180 ringing so you can see the 180 ringing that make sure you are checking the direction of these messages so the server is sending the 100 trying and then server will send the 180 ringing as well this is just a basic call flow and then after 180 ringing it will send the 200 ok so once you get the 200 ok after that client needs to respond whether they received the 200 ok message which contains all the things either it could be uh, it could be the offer and it could be the answer in the 200 ok that depends whether we are using early offer or delay offer we will discuss that as well so once 200 ok is coming from server to client then user agent one needs to respond with the acknowledgement so it will send the acknowledgement from user agent one to the user agent two so after acknowledgement rtp will establish you can see rtp will establish between these two and now if someone responds with the like if they want to just drop the not the drop if they just want to disconnect the call then someone will respond like if user agent 2 wants to disconnect the call then there will be a message from user agent 2 to user agent 1 that is a buy message if user agent 1 disconnects the call first like it presses the uh, disconnect button then the message will be from user agent 1 to user agent 2 so here user agent 2 is sending the buy message then there will be a response from user agent 1 to user agent 2 that will be 200 ok so the 200 ok is a response of buy message so this is just a normal basics call flow like if uh, we are just calling from one user agent one to the user agent two this is just a normal call flow if user agent two wants to transfer it to the voicemail to the other extension then we have the other calls flow like i will show you that as well let's move on to the next one so let's discuss about the transaction and dialogue. So what is transaction and what is dialogue? So transaction, you can see the transaction consists of a request, any non-final response received and a final response. So you can see, you can say that the transaction is, uh, we can say transaction is the one which is from invite till the final response that is 200 okay you can see it is basically a complete request response means invite till 200 okay is a transaction so that is one transaction then we have ACK message ACK is also ACK, ACK itself is also a transaction and then so the first transaction in the like i can show you i, I will show you actually so the first transaction is invite till 200. Next transaction is ACK. ACK is also, ACK itself is a transaction and it doesn't need a response. It's a request as well as response. And then we have buy and 200 OK. So buy till 200 OK is also one transaction. Let me show you in the previous slide. So you can see from invite till 200 OK, this is one transaction. 
the ACK is a second transaction. And then we have buy and 200. Okay, this is a third transaction. So this is the transaction and then we have a dialogue. What is dialogue? So dialogue is I think just a series of transaction between two peers. So two peers, you can say user agent one, this one and user agent two, these are the two peers and the whole from invite till 200. Okay, this is just a one dialogue. And then we have a session. Session is just a media stream, either it's, it could be audio or video flowing between peers it usually consists of RTP and possibly we can say RTCP packets as well. So for the session, we need uh, transactions and dialogues. We need transaction and dialogues in order to create sessions. Let's move on to the next one. Then we have uh, SIP messages that we will discuss about it. So as you know, SIP is a client server model like a request and response model. So all the messages is in US and sky based that the message in the SIP consists of request line, request header, and the message body. So message body, why are you showing message body is optional. I will show you that. Sometimes there is nothing in the message, but sometimes there will be so many things in the message. That's why it is optional here. On few of the responses, there will be, there will not be a message body. And in the SIP request can be accepted, redirected, or rejected. We already discussed earlier and then progress on the request is optional what we uh, saw earlier as well so progressing message is optional then we have sip methods so sip methods i took this from like rf rfc that is also in the rfc 3261 so we have so many sip methods that is invite we already discussed what is invite so you can see a user or service is being invited to participate in a multimedia session. Yep. And then we have ACK. What's the role of ACK? It confirms that a client has received a final response to the invite request. Okay. And then we have a buy message. Buy message, it terminates any existing session that can be sent by any user agent in a multi-party session. Like we discussed earlier, the uh, user agent two was sending a buy to the user agent one. So it is just terminating. It, he wants to terminate that session. And then we have a cancel request. It cancels pending request, doesn't terminate sessions that have been accepted. So what the cancel means, if user agent one is sending invite to the user agent two, but user agent one is not getting the hundred prank from the user agent two, then it will send the invite message again. Okay? If it is not getting the 100 trying again, then it will send the invite message again. But as soon as uh, as soon as you just uh, uh, make a call from one extension to the other, but uh, but you are not getting any response from the other party, you will just disconnect the call. So disconnect the call means it is sending the cancel request to the U user agent too. So once the user agent two uh, receives the cancel request, it will send a response that, okay, I will just disconnect it. Then we have options message. I will show you that cancel as well in upcoming slides. So we have options request as well. We can use that one in the SIP. So it queries the capabilities of server. And then we have register message as well. Register, uh, register it registers the user agent with the server, with the registrar server of that domain. So we have additional SIP methods as well that's the threaded with the info, prac, subscribe, notify, update, message, refer, and publish. So we can use these methods as well. We will discuss about these info, prac, subscribe, and notify messages. Like if you want to subscribe, if you want to notify some notify, you can you can say uh, let's just take an example in the SIP integration. Like we have SIP integration in CUCM and Unity. So Unity will just send the notify messages, whether you need to blink the light or not. So it will send the notification, please blink the light. If someone reads that voicemail, then it will send notification again, just to off the light, the red light on the Cisco IP phone. Subscribe, we can say, uh, if you want to subscribe anything, then update, if you want to update anything, like you can send the message like uh, you're updating the codex or anything, anything. We have a message that is mainly for the instant messaging. 
prefer if you are referring it to someone then publish message as well we'll discuss about all these methods so then we have sip responses that what i told you earlier we will discuss so sip responses we have six response six sip responses 1xx 2xx 3xx 4xx is still 6x so 1xx is mainly the information so it will just send a response like request received it is continuing to process request we already checked it like 100 trying was sending from user agent 2 to user agent 1 then 100 trying after 100 trying there is a 180 ringing then 181 183 anything anything can come after that 100 trying that depends what the user agent 2 is doing that time so that is 1xx is a provisional response is you can say it's not a final response so final response is 2xx 1xx is provisional responses then we have 2xx that is it means it's a success so action it is saying the action was successfully received so you can say it uh, say it understood it the session was already accepted and it is successfully received so it, it will just send the message like 200 okay or the 202 acceptable message then we have 3xx message uh, that is related with the redirection if it is like redirecting it to some other party another sip element needs to be contacted in order to complete the request i will show you in the upcoming slides as well with the scenario like how it is redirecting the message from one to the another so it will send the 3xx message either could be 300 301 302 anything multiple choices more permanently or more temporarily there are so many messages as well in 1xx there is just not uh, four messages which is showing on the screen or the two message or the three message in the three x there are so many messages these are the message which is mainly uh, which is mainly we are getting actually then we have four xx message if you are getting four xx message it means it might be a client error request contains bad syntax or cannot be fulfilled at that time so for xx message mainly we are getting 401 unauthorized if it is not getting authenticated then you will get this unauthorized message 406 407 and if the other party is busy, then it can uh, respond with a message 486 busy here, then 487 as well, request terminated, not acceptable, like this. Then we have 5xx, 5xx means that is a server error. It, it means server failed to fulfill that request. Five, you can get, you will get 502 bad gateway or a 503 service unavailable. And then we have 6xs, it means it's a global failure. So the request is invalid at that server. So it will send the, with the response 600 busy everywhere or 603 message as a decline message. So it, that that is in the condition of global failure. Okay, let's discuss about early offer, delay offer and the early media part. So I, I uh, showed you the normal basic call flow in which invite was going from user agent one to the user agent two, then it will is just getting the 100 trying when it is ringing 200 okay, and then response with a 200 oh, sorry, response with acknowledgement. So let's discuss about the early offer, then I will show you uh, with that diagram, what early offer delay offer means. So you can see it, what early offer means. Early offer is, it's just an initial SIP invite that is sent with SDP in the message body itself. So session initiator means calling device. So calling device that was user agent one or user agent client, you can say. So it sends its capabilities, including supported codecs. Capabilities means it will send the SDP and SDP contains all the codecs. So it sends its capabilities in the SDP contained in the initial invite. So early offer means whenever the user agent one is initiating the request, it will send its capabilities means it will send its codecs like what are the codecs he is supporting. It will send all these things in the initial invite. In the initial invite. So this method allows the called device to choose its preferred codec for the session what it means so uh, initial invite sends all the codecs then user agent 2 that is server it will choose 
the codex from the list of the codex which user agent one sent. The call device choose its preferred codec. So this early offer is the default method that is used by Cisco voice gateway acting as the originating gateway. If you want to change it, we can change it. So early offer will, oh, sorry. Yeah, initial will initial invite will send early offer and then you will get the response in the 200 OK, which is coming from user agent two to user agent one. With the 200 OK message, it is it will send the SDP. After uh, you can say uh, determining which codec he is having, or you can say after negotiation. So what is delay offer? So delay offer is if you are not sending anything in the initial invite, that is a delay offer means user agent one is not telling user agent two what all codecs I am having. So in that case, user agent two will tell user agent one in the 200 OK message that these are the codecs which I am having. Then user agent one will respond with the acknowledgement and it will negotiate first and then it will send the SDP messages in the acknowledgement. So let's just read it out. An initial SIP invite that is sent without SDP in the message body. The session initiator, that is user agent one, doesn't send its capabilities in the initial invite, but wait for the called device. Call device here is user agent two to send its capabilities first. So it will send the capabilities first in the 200 OK, and then user agent one, user agent one will respond with the acknowledgement. For example, the list of codecs supported by the caller device, thus allowing the calling device to choose the codec to be used for the session. So this is early offer and delay offer. Then we have early media. So let's discuss early media is, it allows the sending of media from the called party or an application server to the caller, even before the call is accepted. So call accepted means if some if the other party just pick up the receiver or just answer the call, that time only the call is accepted. If it is ringing, the call is not accepted at that time. So it is saying the next thing, Cisco Gateway supports early media for both early offer as well as delayed offer. So let's let me tell you about the early media in detail. So early media is like uh, when user agent one is sending invite message to the user agent two, it will respond with the 100 trying. Then after 100 trying, instead of 180 ringing, it will send the 183 session progress with SDP. Okay, so if it is sending 183 session progress with SDP, it means that is a early media. It means user agent one will hear that thing which is being sent by user agent two in the 183 session progress. It's like you can say if, uh, you, uh, if I am calling from my mobile to the another cell phone and I am hearing the uh, caller tune, then that is a early media. I am not, I am not hearing any any uh, ringing tone, ring back tone, I can say, like you can, you like mostly we will hear it. So you will not hear that thing. You will just hear the, that caller tune, that song, which, uh, which is on the next other party. So that is a early media. So it will send all these things in the 183 session progress with SDP messages. If there is no caller tune on the other party, then it will just send the 180 session, 180 session progress. So it will just uh, ring on the other party so that you can hear the ring back tone. That is a early media. So let's discuss on the next one. And I will show you in the exam, in the slides as well with the early offer as well as delay offer. So this is the endpoint to endpoint signaling without a server. Let me show you so this is early media early offer you can see it sends the offer in the invite itself so in the offer it contains all the sdp messages all the uh, 
codex as well on the uh, rtp port as well all other things i will show you in the example i will show you once uh, we'll talk about the traces so this is the, this contains offer and it sends it sends a reply with 100 trying then there will be a 180 ringing and then in the 200 okay user agent 2 negotiates the codec and all these things and then it will just give a reply with the answer so 200 okay it contains answer then it will just send the acknowledgement rtv established and then anyone can buy and 200 okay let me show you the delay offer as well so in delay offer we discussed that invite message will be sent without any sdp so invite is sent there is no sdp it will just respond with 100 trying then 180 ringing and after 180 ringing it will send the offer so means user agent 2 will send its capabilities first you can say 200 okay contains offer now user agent 1 will negotiate and then response with acknowledgement message which contains an answer once it's done, then RTP will establish because media capability is already negotiated, codec negotiated, and then anyone can buy and it will just respond, respond with a 200. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let's discuss about the SIP request, which we discussed so far, like how the messages are flowing from uh, one user agent one to the user agent two so let me just uh, it's it's just an example it's just an example traces because uh in the upcoming slides we are going to discuss about the sip headers that's why i just put this slide here so here you can see this is just a, a session initiation protocol the first is a request line it means this is an invite it is sending the invite this is the number from this and that. This is method, but what's the method? Invite. Then we have message header. It contains, uh, these are these are the SIP headers actually. Message header contains from, to, call ID. Uh, cases mean it's a CSEC number. And we have user agent, max forwards, via header, supported, contact header, content type, and content length. These are the things which we need to see whenever we are troubleshooting anything. If we want to find any call, then call ID would help because this is a unique one. This call ID will, is unique throughout the call. So call ID is unique between user agent one and user agent two. If there is anything between user agent one and user agent two, like you have CUCM, any proxy server, any SIP proxy, any other server, then the call ID is unique between two endpoints. Like if we have CUCM, then call ID will be unique between user agent one and CUCM. And user agent and uh, the call ID will be different for CUCM to the user agent two. So use call ID will be unique for end to end like from one endpoint to another endpoint and we have like so many things in right from header to header like from where the call is coming to header where is the call going call id csec number that is sequence number maximum forwards user agent supported headers we'll discuss about this supported headers when we dis when we'll discuss about the prac i will give you a detailed uh detailed thing on the prac and then we have this allow as well means it, it is it is just saying what are the things allow like act by cancel invite subscribe refer back there are so many things and then we have via headers contact content type content length so let's discuss about these in detail so we have sip message headers so mandatory sip headers are request uri via to from call id csec contact so contact header it's just saying it is also written here mandatory most of the time yes it is mandatory so tax in from and to needed to create a dialogue branch needed to identify transition we already discussed about these headers in the example traces uh it's just a next is a like from header field you can say what's the from header field so from where the call is coming 
so from header and to header it will be same throughout the call it will not change whether the so you are saying like if the call is initiated from user agent one to user agent two then from and to will be there in the initial request and it will be same throughout the call when either either uh, the message is coming from user agent two to one or one or two but from and to will be same throughout the call i will show you in the traces so what's the from header field it's logical identity of the request initiator it contains uri and optionally display name as well so you can see this is a uri and it contains the display info display name then display name anonymous initiator also adds a from tag you can you can just see this is just a tag you can add this tag as well to the header field and we have two header field so it means two means where the call is going so this is the uri zip to address this one it's a logical recipient of the request two is the destination of the message two it is not used to route the message so usc will not add a two tag so it is just adding a tag to from the tag is adding on the from only not on the two so uas adds a two tag so user agent client will add a tag on from message and user agent server will add a tag on the to header field then we have call id header field call id that is just it's a unique id actually so globally unique identifier for a call same call id for request and response inside a dialog register messages from a user agent have the same call id we have random string including phone's host name and ip address and that and sip user agent needs to guarantee the uniqueness so you uniqueness it means call id should be unique so sip user agent what you're sending the call id so it, it needs to guarantee the uniqueness so the combi combination of two tag from tag and call id defines a dialog what is dialog dialog is peer to peer relationship between uac and the us for a call so dialog is from invite till 200 okay which is coming after buy that is a complete dialog so in that first uh, example which i showed you which contains invite till 200 okay then act then buy and 200 okay so if we uh, so these are three transactions and these three transaction completes a dialog so next we have uh, the via header field so what is via header field is saying via and is just saying from where the request is coming I mean, like if there is anything between that let's just read it out why I indicates transport used and the location where response needs to be sent back. UAC must insert first via. So via must contain a branch parameter. Branch identifies the transaction inside the dialog. That branch should be unique. And the exceptions include cancel and ACK for non 2 xx responses. So cancel uses the branch from the request it cancels you're getting cancels uses the branch from the request it cancels and the ACK for non 2xx responses will have the same branch from the invite whose response it acknowledges so you can say ACK for non 2xx non 2xx it means that is a buy message so sorry you have a 200 okay for the buy message that's not for uh, the egg is not for that so if if there is any egg for non 2xx then it will be from the same branch i will show you in the traces with the csec it is written clearly over there that from where this egg is coming from where the buy is coming from where the uh request or response like all other things like from where the invite from to is coming it will clearly mention i will show you everything in the traces itself 
then we have c sec header field c sec header field you can say it's just it's just a random number and it is showing the invite here as well so invite what what invite means so this invite means it is a c sec number of the message for that invite is just a csec number for the invite message i will show you so it is just a way to identify and order transactions we can identify like uh, it, is, it is just uh, identifying the uh, response like uh, this is the csec number for which invite so once an invite is sent there will be a csec number once there is an acknowledgement for that invite like there is a final response that comes with the sorry after in once we send an invite it will send the 200 okay as a final response then in that 200 okay you can see uh, this is the 200 okay for the initial invite it will give you the number with the invite message whether this is a 200 okay for that invite or that 200 okay is for any other message any other request so it 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 makes help when uh, there are so many calls running on the ship and you just uh, uh, you just take the logs from the server and you need to identify uh, that which 200 okay is a response to which invite so it's very difficult to find with the help of this csec you can find so this csec has sequence number and method this is a sequence number and this is the method method should match the request method then we have max forwards so max forward as of now the starting max forward is 70 it means it 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 just limits the number of hops a request can jump so if any request is going like uh, if user agent one sends the first request to one of the proxy server it will contain max forward 70 then that proxy server is sending that request to the another proxy server in that message maximum forwards will reduce with the one that it will show the 69 and then if it is sending uh, to the another proxy then it will just change it to 68 so the main intention is to avoid core loops thus, over, thus avoiding overwhelming the proxy every proxy reduces the hope count by one higher values can cause looped calls to overwhelm the proxy and the lower values can prevent call from reaching their final destination then we have a contact header field which is very useful contact header you can see is just uh, giving the ip and the transport method that is a ud so it what's the use of contact it direct route to contact the user agent it is the destination for specific requests like if the user agent one is sending the request to user agent two but they don't know the ip address they don't know their ip address it will just send the maybe the user agent two is on the uh public network like on the pstn the user agent 2 doesn't know from where the request is coming what's the ip then it will mention in the contact header so it will check the contact header field user agent 2 will check the contact header field and then it will response on that it is used in netting traversal and proxy compares the source ip via and the contact header in the next lecture we will discuss about the uh, particular messages like invite message contact message like invite header contact header from two headers in detail and i will show you the scenarios as well in the next my my, my upcoming lecture i hope you guys uh, liked my video and please please let me know in the comment section and please like and share with your friends and colleagues and please don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that uh, you will receive the notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.